how to build your own seven figure dojo. If you are struggling as a martial arts school owner and you want to generate seven figures a year in revenue, then this is the training to watch. We're gonna take a clip from our recent 7FD Live event. You can go to 7FDLive.com for an event coming up soon and get tickets to that. And you can also watch this video right now where we break apart the pieces on how to build your own seven figure dojo. Let's get going. So you guys have heard a little bit about this, but when we first started, our revenue each month was right around $5,000 a month. That's, that's where we started um, back in the day. And then in a four year window of time, we took that from $5,000 a month and we changed that to $85,000 a month in those four years. So there's a lot when you want to rapidly scale that's required of you, it is possible to do. One thing that's gonna be different for a service-based business like what we have that is gonna be different for an online retail store or something like that is that you have a variable that changes over time and that's instruction and quality of students. So if you don't have good procedures in place for that, it's gonna be hard to scale rapidly. Uh, the first thing is that I wanna talk about, these are the three things that you're going to need to have, desire, determination, and dedication. These three things are gonna be the things that will allow you to stay the course and complete the mission. Desire, determination, and dedication. I wanna to talk to you specifically about desire to start off first. If you have this big goal, no matter what the big goal is, if it's a seven figure school, if it's a very profitable six figure school, what drives you and why do you want what you want? So I want you to take a moment and I want you to write down, why do you want the school to be successful? The answer to this question back then for me was that I wanted a full time operation for my family. I wanted my dad to be able to stop working construction and I wanted to be able to have a full-time career myself. I also did not want to do any more school. <laughs> I was done. I didn't want any more school, having to go to school, having to sit there and learn, things like that. So what drives you is the first question. Why do you want what you want? So right now I want you to write down a revenue number. All right, I want you to write down that revenue number that you want. Just go for it. $500,000 a year, seven fifty dollars a year. Gross revenue is a whole lot easier to think about than net. What do you want your school to have right now? Just throw a number down. $85,000 a month or $83,333 to be exact is seven figures a year. So what do you want? 50 grand a month, 65 grand a month times 12. Write it down. If you're not an owner, what do you want for you? This whole event has been really focused on getting you guys to take action steps while you're here so you're not just having to take action steps and implement while you're thinking about it because we all know once you go back to life as you know it back in your hometown it's going to keep going so the more action steps you can do here on the mental processes the easier the implementation will be later so next thing you wrote down the number why is that number important to you? Write a bullet point underneath. What does that do for you? Does that allow you to live a better lifestyle? Will you be able to do things that are important to you with that money? Will you be able to bring people on board as teammates or pay them a higher revenue or wage? If you hit that number, shortly after making the decision to go and try really hard and, and do this thing and go to as big as we could so that we could have full-time income for my dad and full-time income for me, I got involved in a relationship with Mr. Waters. And so when I did that, that then changed to not only providing revenue for his family, right? The, the family of my mom and my dad, but also this new family that we were going to start. So then it became, well, how do we you know, have it so that he can quit his job and then can be in the family business too. So the vision for what we had grew. So the why grew. Your why today may not be the same why later. The why changed again later when we started adding on team members. So that why became more about, okay, if we have more team members, we can impact more lives and we can impact and have more revenue, all of those things as well. So if you haven't written this down yet, I want you to go ahead and do this. I must have a seven figure dojo because, I must have a seven figure dojo because. Sometimes when we write things down with very definitive statements, like I must, I must have, what it does is it really penetrates deep enough so that we take action on it. If I don't do this, what will happen? 
So we're going to look at it from the positive standpoint of I must have a seven figure dojo because of X, Y, or Z. But now we need to think about if I don't do this, what will happen? We're going to go worst case. Most people are motivated more by the fear of pain than they are the opportunity of gain. So if you are that person that's motivated, you know, you've got that drive to make this thing happen because you don't want something else to occur that will serve you for a time and that will help you move along the journey. At some point, that's not the best idea to serve you because it limits your growth because you're in a fear state of mind but it is a great catalyst to get you going in the right direction. So if I actually succeed, this will happen. Let's say you get to the seven figure dojo. What's something that will happen to you? Who will you become? What type of person will you be or what type of things will you be able to do? Again, if you're a team member, if the school owner gets the revenue up to seven figures, what does that look like for the success of you as an individual if you were to stay tied to this company for them. What we're doing right now is visioneering, not engineering, visioneering. So we're taking the vision that you have and we're breaking it down into steps where you're actually having to process and think about what the future will look like. Hey, before you click off this video, I wanna let you know that right now we have tickets on sale for 7fdlive.com, the next event, and they are discounted, but they won't be discounted long. Make sure you click the link in the description and go to 7fdlive.com to get your tickets before we sell out. Now let's get back to the video. The next thing that we've got to really dive into is determination. Along this process, you have to be able to endure the no's. People are going to tell you no repetitively. And if you allow those no's to deter you from achieving your mission, you won't achieve it. I think that's pretty obvious. But I'm going to say that again. If you let people deter you from this decision you're making today, there's no way you get to it. I want you to think about right now, the last time somebody told you no for something you really wanted to do, that you knew deep down inside was the thing that you needed to do, that you knew deep down inside was something that if you don't do it, you would regret it. When was the last time someone told you no? And if you think in your head, did I listen and do I regret it or did I not listen and do I regret it, right? I should have paid more attention. What was the outcome of that decision? In your mind, just think about that for a moment. Just hold on to that. I really wanted something. Somebody told me no. Then what happened? Part of what we had to do to catapult us to that next level is my mentor told me, hey, I want you, you know, you got to get some quick cash because uh, he said, I will continue to coach you. I'll be your coach, but you got to make your own way to Oklahoma. Uh, that's where the business conference was. You need a plane ticket. You need to pay for the seminar. I had never been on a plane, a commercial flight. I'd never done that before. And prior to that, my dad had told me, I'm never getting on another plane in my life. I won't do it. It's too far. You're not going. And, and he also told me I wasn't going to go by myself because I was like 17, 18 years old. And he wasn't going to let me fly across the country by myself to a place I'd never been to with other people that he'd never met. That just wasn't going to happen. I said, well, we got to go. And he's like, we're not going. We're not going to go. You figure out a different way to do this. And so I used the, uh, the go-kart bargaining trick. You see, this is a trick I learned when I was a kid. So when I was a kid, I really wanted a go-kart. And my dad had told me, well, if you save up half for it, then I'll do the other half. I was eight, nine, 10 years old, something like that. So, I mean, saving up $350 was a lot of money back then for an eight, nine or 10 year old. So it took me years to save up this money. So birthdays, asking people to do odd jobs and I'd get a few extra dollars. And I didn't spend anything for years as a child. I spent nothing because I really wanted that go-kart. So I came to him one day, emptied out the whole piggy bank, 300, 350, whatever it was. And I was like, okay, let's go get my go-kart. And he was not ready for that because, you know, we, we were doing okay, but it wasn't like he had extra money just laying around. And so he had to start saving because my money was already saved. I was ready. So he started saving when we bought the go-kart. So I'm like, maybe if I show him how determined I am to go, that he'll say yes, because if I, pose the question to him in such a way that he thinks it's impossible and then I do the impossible, I'll put him in a spot where it'll make him say yes. I mean, I know it's pure manipulation, but that's what was going on in that moment. I get it. So I said, look, if I can generate enough revenue to cover the plane tickets, the hotel, 
in the seminar, would you get on the plane? Well, you're not gonna be able to do that, so sure, whatever. Challenge accepted. So I asked my mentor, look, this is the only way I'm getting there. Is the deal still on the table? You'll coach me if I get there. And he's like, yes, you'll do that. And, uh, and so what ended up happening is he said, you gotta get some cash. I'm like, well, I don't know how. <laughs> and he goes, start a cardio kickboxing program, follow these steps, go to these businesses, get some cardio kickboxing students. I'm like, cardio kickboxing? That's like, like the typo stuff? And he's like, well, yeah, play music, have them work out charged really cheap that doesn't matter right now you can fix it later just get revenue in the door right now so you can come okay so this was in december and the event was in april and in four months we enrolled 50 kickboxing students from the efforts that we had which generated enough revenue to pay for the flight to pay for the plane uh, tickets there to seminar and the hotel and so it made him say yes how much will you endure to get to your yes who will you have to say, look, I know you don't believe in me right now, but I gotta do this thing. It means the world to me. It could change everything if we go do this thing. You're gonna have to have those hard conversations and those hard decisions that you're gonna have to make because you believe in it. Because deep down you know it's the thing that you need to do to catapult you to where you want to go. And then you've gotta be willing to embrace change. If you're the type of person who has this in your mind that this is the way that it's going to work and there's no other way that it can work, let me tell you that on a journey to seven figure business, you will have to embrace change because you're gonna go through different stages of growth. It's just gonna happen. You're gonna need to have that perspective of having a growth mindset if you want to scale and if you wanna scale fast, okay? Educating yourself, like what you guys have been doing here this weekend is great and amazing, but you are gonna have to make this a part of your daily life. So for those of you guys, you know, you've hopped on board your clients with us, we're helping you along that journey. You're gonna be in this learning process. All of us as martial artists are always willing to learn something new, but the moment when it comes to learning something new for our personal mentality or for our personal education or business education, that's when we go, hold up, I already did that, I already learned. We have to be willing to get to that next point. And if you go after this thing, expecting nothing less than achieving your goal, your goal will be achieved if you do not accept the excuses leading up to it. The excuses you make for yourself, the excuses other people make, expect nothing less. You have to go for it and you have to go for it with all of your heart. And that's what I did. Look, guys, if a 17 year old back then who knew nothing about business could do it, you can do it with all of your life experience that you've already had. Everybody in here has at least double the life experience that I had at that point in time. So you can do that. All right, so that was a piece of what we did at our event. Of course, we have trainings just like this and many more that are available at our next live event, 7fdlive.com. In the meantime though, guys, make sure you go ahead and you click subscribe to this channel as we're posting more videos just like this all the time. Until next time, guys, be awesome.